Last night was the Oscars. I didn't include it in uh, the opening because I literally, I was, I went um, out of town for the day yesterday. Back, coming back to Brooklyn on the train. Jumped on my phone, checking social media, blah, blah, blah. And then I noticed all these things about the Oscars. And I was like, oh, that's happening. I have no idea. My only comment is I hope Get Out did well. That was a legit great movie. So this is a clip from Fox and Friends. And does it involve the Oscars, Matt? You're going to cl- uh, cue that, this uh, clip up for well, us. Well, that's the reason they're talking about it. But the real topic is the pay gap, which is, as Kilmeade says, not just a problem in America, but it's also a problem in Hollywood. Brian Kilmeade. Also was noteworthy, Natalie Portman brought up a problem with uh, Hollywood, that whole pay gap thing. It's not our problem. Uh, it's not an issue just in America. It's a huge issue in Hollywood. She brought up right now for a woman <laughs> to get paid as much as a man. It's 80 cents on the dollar. In Hollywood, it's 30 cents on the dollar, which is unbelievable to me because if you have a woman that get, brings you to the box office, she should get paid like that. Or a man where gender it shouldn't even be a, a, an issue there. And that's what I'm telling you. Y'all should tell me how much y'all make. And then, <laughs> and then I you- should get paid 80%. Uh, no, get 100% exactly. I should, dollar I should. Dollar for dollar. But according to yeah. what's happening in America, yeah, I think y'all should think about this. Well, Write Andrew, it down. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> don't use go, it to negotiate. Do me a favor. Don't go to Hollywood. They're not going to pay you enough. <laughs> okay. All right? Promise me. Look, okay. when it comes to Hollywood, there is... <laughs> that was so awkward and so stupid in so many ways. So, Brian Kilmeade has internalized the Fox News talking points so much that he literally thinks Hollywood is almost like, what does he think, like Hollywood is like Malta or something? It's like a separate, small, ultra-wealthy nation-state off of the close it's to the, the United States It's the or Vatican something. for liberals. It's the Vatican for liberals. And then his co-host, Savannah, what's her face? That's Ainsley Earhart. Ainsley Earhart, whatever. She's like kind of doing a real awkward kid on the square because she's like, I know that I get paid less than these two troglodytes, but I should never complain about that. So let me say I should get 80%. And then she confirms the whole pay gap thing, which they would say is a complete and utter myth. And then they kind of awkwardly chuckle. And what's funny is that this is another test of the ongoing debate. Of who's dumber, Ducey or Kilmeade? Because, and I still maintain that while they're absolutely both among the most stupid people on the planet, Kilmeade is next level because he doesn't even get that that's awkward. He's like, he's like, oh, you want to see? Well, well, don't go to Hollywood where where that mean guy Jimmy Kimmel works because you won't make the money. And Ducey's just like, oh, yeah, look, it's all fun and games, whether we're promoting war crimes or forwarding American dictatorship or even just doing a segment on why uh, it's weird that girls wear pants. But don't ever, ever, ever ask me to write down my salary. <laughs> I'll kill you. That would have been great television, actually. <laughs> if if, if all, this, all of a like... sudden Ducey just got serious, he's like, no. I don't think I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you a gosh darn thing. We're going to break. We come back. Lesbians, why are they weird? And then you hear like the sound like, if you ever bring that up again, I will kill you. Yeah, that's the thing is, is Ducey might be equally as dumb as Kill Me just in terms of ROP um, computing power, but he knows when to keep his mouth shut. Oh, he, uh, Ducey was well, like, we think of and remember Roger Ailes for being a serial predator of women and his grotesque abuse. But whatever the Stockholm Syndrome he had with Ducey, and I think it was a very willing Stockholm Syndrome, I think that you know, Ducey, he's so well-programmed that he must like have like a Roger Ailes in his imagination that he talks to that he gets daily talking points from. <laughs> like, That's my imaginary friend, Roger. Yep. He just terrorized a woman in his office. Now I'm going inside and getting my daily talking points from him. That's like Ducey's like creative visualizations. <laughs> Rings out Roger Ailes be like, all right, here's what we're doing today. That's why black kids 
should be have guns pointed to them in high school, and Mr. Trump shouldn't need to seek re-election. He should just be appointed to a second term. Okay, Mr. Ailes. Um, but yeah, you notice like the there's a lot of tension in Ducey. None in Kill Me, except for the the only thing about Kill Me is Kill Me does not have the happy go luckiness of a stupid person. He's got like a, it's sort of like, I've never seen like such a like clenched jawed stupid person before. Well, because he can't be friends with guys like Jimmy Kimmel anymore. Uh, He's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but people are getting mad at me. The people that I want to like. What did I do? I just said people in Hollywood should never talk about healthcare because they're idiots. And then all of a sudden they said that I was, that I was short. What the hell? I'm going to write another book. Brian Kilmeade, author, 